Hi Capricorn. <clears throat> so I'll start by telling you about how uh, my son is very specific about how he would like for me to appear when I speak to him. I think he has certain associations with me having my hair up in a bun and having my glasses on, um, perhaps with being more, you know, in like work mode or clean mode or strict mode maybe perhaps. But this has of course never deterred him from saying, no, I don't want it that way. I would, and so what he's done from a very young age, even before he could really talk, Whenever I would go to engage with him, he would pull whatever was in my hair out, so my hair would fall down, and then he would pull my glasses off. And uh, I don't know why I'm saying that in the past tense, because he will, in June, inshallah, he'll be 10, and he still does that. And even if we're on FaceTime, he'll be like, mommy, mommy, um, can you uh, take your hair down and take your glasses off, please? No, I'll wait. It's okay. And like forever, I've been thinking like, uh, where does he get that? You know, because he's got a Gemini son, not really a Gemini quality at all. He's got a Leo rising, not at all a Leo quality. Um, Leos love you how you are. He's got Venus and Mercury in Cancer, not at all Cancerian. And I was like, I'm missing something. Like, I am I know I'm missing something. There's something so obvious here that's staring me in the face. And I just, like, who does he remind me of with this? <laughs> it was so obvious. So my son's moon is Capricorn. Along, you know, like I've told you, my brothers are all Capricorns. My best friend that's a guy is a Capricorn. My best friend that's a girl is a Capricorn. My best friend from high school is Capricorn. Like, I told you all this. But my, like, I was like, that's so crazy. And also, my nephews were very close in age to him and looked very much like him. My Capricorn brother's sons also have Capricorn moons. So, uh, it makes sense because, you know, I kind of hit on this while I was out um, just having drinks and hanging out with my brother and he was acting the same way. He was like, here, take this off. Here, do this. Here, why don't you sit here? Here, do that. And I was just like, like I laugh because I think it's funny. Like I'm uh, amen uh, amenable that way. Like I don't mind if you want to control me a little bit and be like, here, sit here, whatever. I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. Like I don't, sure, I'll humor you. Uh, but I was just thinking like, I don't know how your wife puts up with you. <laughs> um, but then I realized that, you know, Baba does the same thing. My son does the same thing. Um, so uh, that's a funny thing about control with you guys. Now, how does that relate to what's going on? Well, uh, it relates in this way. I'll tell you um, another another story after I show you some cards. Okay, so the cards we have out so far are the moon. And there will be a full moon uh, later this month, right? That will affect you. But the very obvious thing is if you have a cancer in your life. Okay. And then the seven of wands. So um, a guy who's got two different shoes on. He's kind of harrowed. You know, he's obviously still in the middle of fighting off an attack but has at least reached a place of higher ground. Not stability by any means, but has the advantage. And then Five of Cups. Okay, there are some regretful ends here that you will not linger. So for you, for Capricorns, this is not a card of lingering because it's just not your nature to linger this is more seeing the end and seeing the potential that could have been there and just being like, oh, it sucks that you couldn't be better. Not you, but the person who's disappointing you, the business venture, the thing that you put so much of your
your ambition and your drive into, I was going to say your heart, but same difference. You know. And that's difficult, right? It's difficult to see these cups spilled when we think in relation to the story I just told you about how Capricorns do like a certain amount of control over the situation, right? Like, you guys... really like creating an environment and it just sucks so bad when that environment falls apart for whatever reason because like we've discussed before for you that's a loss you know plain and simple it's a loss and what makes it worse is that you have to process this loss while still actively being in a space where you're, you know, not safe, where you're still fending off something. And more and more stuff is coming to light and more and more stuff about you though, you know, like like all this fighting that you're doing, right? All this like trying to keep it together, okay? Have you stopped to think about whether that drive is empty by now? I know a lot of you have already gotten there, but April will see you to that point where you're like, yeah, I'm striving, but is it just my nature to strive at this point? Because like these cups are already spilled, dude. You know, and although you guys are great once things end, man, can you drag out an end? Lord, you're just like waiting for the other person to leave. I don't understand. Unless they do something, you know, unless they do something. Now, nine of pentacles. So if you are a female Capricorn. Wonderful. So in terms of work, you've got new energy and new luck coming in. The death card. This has a lot to do with this one. In both ways, it feels like death. This does. But this is also rebirth, right? Turning around and noticing this will facilitate a rebirth. So it's both. That's a great card. Seven of... Swords turns into Eight of Pentacles. Now, Capricorn. I have spoken to quite a few people that feel that you are lying to them. I've also spoken to a lot of you who feel that you are being lied to. So I feel like perhaps... Duplicity is just in the cards for you. <laughs> in the cards! For you right now. But the bottom of the deck is the sun. And the outcome is the eight of pentacles. Okay. So... There we go. Now, if we look at these cards, there we go. You've got this kind of energy. For something new. I think underneath it all, you believe very much that you should be in love. And I think the thing you're mourning is feeling no longer that feeling of being in love. 
you feel the spilling of those cups and although in a lot of ways you're doing it you know in a lot of ways you're doing it but this like hopeless romantic in you wants to be done with this life you know wants to be wants to move on to something that you can build on you know perhaps this is a Eh, an okay card for some but you know for a Capricorn this is a fantastic card this is what you guys love to do right build with someone but can you build with someone if you're willing to take risks Okay, like this, which could be like career, school, you know, money, other sorts of relationships, transactional stuff, okay, passion-based stuff like your hobbies, so forth. Is it, do you get what you want? Do you get the fairy tale if you're going to be risky like this, but not risky here? See, this is someone who is the antithesis of risk. This is someone who is looking backward and is unable to see what still stands. This is someone who's in no way contemplating taking any sort of a risk. So do you get this fairy tale um, beginning, new beginning, this hopeless romantic, you know, everything's going to be all right beginning. Do you get that if you're not going to be emotionally risky, brave, emotionally brave, emotionally courageous? You know, do you get that new start if you continue this? And by this, I mean doing this and also, more importantly, allowing this around you. Because Capricorn, the other thing that you do is that you'll, like, know that people are lying to you, but you love them, so you won't say anything, and you'll just let them, like, believe their lies and you're doing them a disservice and you're doing yourself a disservice by keeping this energy around you. And it can impede your growth here, obviously. It's standing in your way, walking the other way. The other way like this guy, the wrong way. You understand? And do you... Do you get to have this new beginning and build towards, you know, a beautiful future with someone if you can't let go of what has been, let go of what is not working, let go of living in this toxicity and move towards building something new for yourself? You want to make it happen, but you're like, how? You know how. You know how. Come on. I never need to sugarcoat anything with you guys. You know how. You just don't want to do it. And it's because you're a bit risk averse. And that's okay. But, you know, kind of enough is enough, right? So. And plus, you know, what's the thing we're not mentioning here? You know what the difference is between all these cards? Well, maybe this one. And this is the only card that really informs you here anyway. So that's good. You know what the difference is between all these cards and this card? This card's fun. That little kid's having fun. I don't know about the horse. The horse is like, why am I in this picture? But like, you know, this is fun. And if you're just going to be around people who are going to be super unhappy, 
and just be like, you know, Debbie Downers all the time and make you feel like you got to defend yourself all the time just on being who you are when really who you are shouldn't be rocking that boat the boat that much because you're not really extra and you're not causing drama but still why do you find yourself in this situation where you have to defend simple things that just should be appreciated taken for granted or just left alone by this person who's going to see the negative and everything ah oh. You got to think about you. And I know I tell you that all the time. And I feel like I need to tell you that all the time because you need it drilled into your head. You just don't listen. You need to think about you. But you know what? I'll give you this. At There is a point. You don't listen and you don't listen. But you keep people like me in your life because you know at some point you're going to have to listen. And then, then you listen. And when you move, you move. But here, this toxicity, this is a very... Um, large wall to climb because this is easy this is how this duplicity is how you've kept yourself in this super comfortable degenerative place with this person is that you've allowed that person to lie to themselves about all sorts of stuff and just tolerated them and their nonsense and then it became your nonsense and you took it on like, I've talked to so many of my Capricorn friends, and I'm like, I'm, why are you telling me nonsense? And they're like, oh, my God, I think I'm just, like, acting like her. And I'm like, yeah, because you don't even sound like yourself. <laughs> You're speaking nonsense. Get a hold of yourself, man. And that's what I'm telling you guys. Get a hold of yourself because Mercury retrograde is coming, and, you know, you got to decide here. So what do you got to decide? I present to you in explanation pretty woman so at the end of pretty woman julia roberts has a choice she can either take the deal that richard gear is giving her which is that he'll buy her like i guess like an apartment or something and she'll be like his um sex worker sex employee and um like you know yeah that will be their transactional arrangement and she's like okay well you know what um no and she leaves and when he's like well what do you want she says well i want the fairy tale and then he shows up you know in on the white horse she's like i want the guy on the white horse with the blah blah and he's like oh impossible relationship and then he shows up on the white horse but actually it's just a white limo uh fun fact my family car growing up was a white like really long limo so weird right um so and we used to like get up out of the sunroof as really little kids on the highway when that thing would be going like 80 like on the way to like ac and stuff and like this one time this really nice like really young cop pulled us over and he like was like uh you can't do that like you could get so hurt like what are you doing um anyway so he shows up on the white horse and he climbs up her fire escape and you know and he gives her the fairy tale now what is the fairy tale that she wanted so she didn't want to be his transactional employee okay she uh that's redundant she didn't want to have a transactional relationship with him okay so what she wanted instead was a connection of the heart and she turned his deal down and what i'm saying is that you find yourself in that other category that she opted out of you know i'm not saying that you're a sex worker although if you are what the fuck is the problem with that nothing Sorry. Just don't like when people judge people. Um, but if you're in an environment, let me let me put it this way, because I feel like I just painted myself into an emotional corner where I'm calling you like names, but I'm not trying to, but I think I'm about to make it worse. So just bear with me. But you guys love me, right? So it's going to be okay. All right. So what I'm trying to say is 
if you're in an environment where you know that your needs are not being met and you are emotionally unhappy and yet you continue to be in that situation that is in some way perjury like against yourself and your higher uh, sense of self and what you're worthy of having in this life and is that akin to having Richard Gere pay your bills for like an apartment on Rodeo do people live on Rodeo I know jack shit about California um yeah it kind of is so this month we go for broke we go for the fairy tale and that means that these toxic things in your life that you're just like and these toxic people that make you feel like this and they when they act like this then you do act like this so when people are like oh well the capricorn in my life is lying to me okay and i'm not in any way mocking anyone who has an issue with the capricorn is here watching for a capricorn that's not what i'm saying but a lot of times when someone says a capricorn is lying to me and you ask them well, are you creating an environment where you know that that person is now going to have going to have to lie? They always say yes. And I'm always like, let me get this straight. So you know that if you tell him that he can't do that, he's going to do it anyway and he's going to lie to you. Yeah. And now you think he's lying to you. Yeah. That sounds like entrapment, yo. Right? Like, that's the way I look at it. But I think that's just because, again, brothers, men. Like, I like from a male perspective, that's, like, uh, scary. Right? Like, if you know that I'm not going to stop, like, going to the strip club or something. I don't know. Like, I'm trying to pick something that wouldn't, like... Because see, for me, if someone was like, I'm going to go to the strip club no matter what, then I'd be like, me too. Um, but I feel like when someone understands your nature and they on purpose try to force you through obligation, the obligation of love or duty or what have you to do the opposite and then you try to fulfill their wishes but then aren't true to yourself but you can't stand not being true to yourself and you're always true to yourself so you go ahead and do that thing and can be dishonest about that process I feel like someone who loves you should be able to hedge that and 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 understand that and not put you in the position where you have to do that I think that's part of understanding and loving a Capricorn is not putting them in the position where they have to act like that devil card. Don't make me do that. Just let me, let me be, if you let me be like my most successful friendship, right? My Russian, my Capricorn. Um, I think the thing that works so incredibly well about us, like every time we're out, people will be like, oh, wow. Like how long have you guys been together? And we're like, we are not together like we just get along we really get along and i think it has to do with letting each other be you know i'm never trying to trap him into a conversation into a meeting into even a mental game like i'm never trying to get him to think what i think i'm like just open to whatever he's got to say to me i'm there's no agenda you know and as soon as you put an agenda on a Capricorn, they will do their damnedest to try to live up to what you need from them because it is their nature to work hard. And and it's like that carrot that the, the dog chases all the time, you know? Like Capricorns need that carrot. They need something to work towards. So if you get, and that can work against them because if you give them something to work towards, even if it's not necessarily very healthy because you've given them a goal and they're so goal, goal oriented, they might just run for that no matter what. You know, and it's a really easy way to manipulate them. However, the thing about that is, is that, you know, in this case in particular, you guys are being manipulated to a certain extent by people who are giving you false, you know, carrots to chase. 
and you are waking up to it. And the way you're waking up to it is by just your emotions are telling you, you know, um, a lot of the earth energy can be a bit not removed from emotion. You guys can be very emotional. It's not that, but it can be an abstraction. It's kind of filtered through the senses, through the material senses, okay? Right? Does that make sense? That your feelings are... Your feelings are experienced through this material filter. It's what you see everything through. And so if someone presents to you something to chase that will make this material filter better, something that you can work towards to progr make progress and create growth and upward mobility, you're going to do it but you can get trapped that way because is it you know is this person the person getting you to work towards the person who's doing this and the person who's making you feel like this or is this what's driving you keeping your secrets or is it this or do you really honestly want to get to a place where you feel better The letting, the, the, the lack of an agenda with a Capricorn, the letting a Capricorn be, what it does is it produces movement out of freedom. And they need that. And when they have it, they give you everything everything that you could want you you are completely safe you know it's like being with jason Bourne, kind of is the way i like to put it resourceful smart strong brave getting it done you know it's handled like that's you know that's the relationship with the russian alex it's handled don't worry about it Oh, thank you. Don't worry about it. You know? And you deserve to have relationships like that where people are not trying to entrap you. And if you're watching this and you're emotionally in that game with a Capricorn where you want to trap them into loving you, just understand that it's not going to work because sooner or later that Capricorn is going to take off that filter of material, you know, that material filter and they're going to feel it they're going to feel the resentment the lack of love the lack of freedom the lack of m freedom of movement the restriction the hypocrisy of the restriction the being asked to wear a yoke that you yourself would not wear and they'll just bounce they'll be out so april is exciting april is painful April will feel empty and confusing, but then purposeful. April is big. April is the beginning. Okay? I love you guys so much. Can you believe that my light of my life, heart of my heart, mashallah, is a Capricorn moon? There was just a tiny little bit of me that maybe be, even feels guilty about it that did like a little dance of joy inside. You know, my soul went, because I just, it's like, of course. Anyway, so I love you guys. I will see you in May. Um, also, I will be in San Francisco from the 1st to the 
8th, and then I will be in LA from the 8th to the 12th, and then I'll be back in San Francisco from the 12th to the 18th. I'll be in New York from the 18th to May 1st, and in Denmark from May till August. So if any of those places you would like a personal private reading face-to-face, uh, -face, please email me right away because the slots are filling up really quickly and San Francisco's going pretty quickly, both um, spans of time. And then I also do personal readings over Skype, FaceTime, or over the phone. So you can either buy those at the Facebook store, which you can click to from this uh, channel, or you can email me and I can send you the price list and you can pay through PayPal that way. It's up to you. And also be on the lookout because in the spring I have a book coming out called The Tarot of Inner Work. It will be available as an ebook, as an audiobook, and as a hardcover, a beautiful hardcover actually. It is basically about how you can use tarot to facilitate a greater understanding of yourself and then specific healing modalities that I have either found or created or meshed with other things that I know in terms of my own spirituality and my background culturally and you know in terms of being a yoga instructor and having done this for a long time. So that will come out in the spring and any updates and excerpts relating to that will be available on my Instagram and my Instagram is actually the best way to keep in touch with me. It's the easiest way to get in touch with me and that is at AmberCon. So, is that it? I think that's it. All right, guys. I love you. I'll see you in May.